My dear beloved respected brothers and sisters, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal who gathered us in this masjid to gather us Yawm Al-Qiyamah with Sayyid Al-Musaleen Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen If I ask If I ask you what does the word rizq mean? What does the word provision, sustenance, rizq, what does it mean? Many of us will answer wealth, my money is a rizq, my children, my house, my car, my job. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen, these are all parts of rizq. But if you think that this is the only form of rizq, then you are looking at rizq from a very narrow lens. Your salat on time is a rizq. Your adhkar ba'd salat after salat is a rizq. Your attendance of Jumu'ah today is a rizq. Your iman is a rizq. Your love to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a rizq. Having a teenager child that is still obeying you as a father or a mother, that's a rizq. Having a great spouse caring, that's a rizq. When you are in salat and you get distracted and all of a sudden you focus again, this focusing again is a rizq. When you are walking and you see something haram and you lowered your gaze, that lowering of the gaze is a rizq. And these kinds of rizq are more precious than the rizq that we mentioned. Why? Because these rizq are saved till the day of judgment. Money comes and goes, children, health. But this rizq, these kind of rizq, of your salat and this, all these are recorded for you and you will find them, they stay there till the day of judgment. And they are better than this rizq. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى the, the hereafter is not only better, but it's also everlasting. My young brothers and sisters, when your father or your mother at home say, can you get me a glass of water and you jump and you get it for them, that's a rizq. If you were not home, your brother would have gotten it. You remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly on your tongue is one of the best forms of rizq because who gave you that? It's the rizq himself. Now, Keep in mind that the rizq of wealth and dunya, Allah gives it to the one he loves and to the one he does not love. But the other rizq that we're talking about, Allah only gives it to the one he loves. There's another concept that many people are not aware of when it comes to rizq. And that is, listen carefully, the delay of rizq is a rizq. The delay of the rizq you asked for and you were patiently waiting is a rizq by itself. I lost my job and I started asking Allah for another job. And I started applying and taking by the means. And things got longer. Now I added tahajjud. That tahajjud was not there when I had the job. Those duas were not there when I had the job. My patience until the rizq is given, my son is, or my daughter, they are doing things that are really causing me sleepless nights and I am up all night making dua for them your patience until your daughter or your son comes back on track 
that's a rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a rizq that will stay till the day of judgment. So the delay of the rizq is a rizq by itself. Now, the second point about rizq that I want to clarify. <coughs> rizq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us in the hadith that is very well known in Sahih Muslim, that when me and you were in our mother's womb, four things were written. My rizq has been decreed. When I am going to die, my deeds, and am I going to be happy, shaqi or sa'id, happy or miserable? That was written when I was four months in my mother's womb. Now, so Allah decreed that rizq for me and you. All kinds of rizq. But most of us, since we only focus or we mostly focus on the wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that I am going to live for certain amount of years. And in this lifespan, I will make one million dollars. I will not die before I make the million dollars. The whole idea is, how do I make the million dollars? It's up to me. I steal it. I inherit it. Someone gives it to me as a gift. I work hard in a halal job to get it. I work in a haram job to get it. The amount is still the same. I just chose wrong path. And this is one of the biggest problem that our ummah and our brothers and sisters, especially in the West, are facing. They think that by going through haram means it will increase the amount of rizq. Third, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya akhwan, one thing about the rizq that you do not have to worry about at all is that the rizq will find you. Wherever you are, the rizq will find you. Listen to what Rasulullah sallallahu told us. لو أن ابن آدم هرب من رزقه كما يهرب من الموت لا أدركه رزقه كما يدركه الموت. If the son of Adam flee from his rizq just like he flees from death. His rizq will find him, will reach him, just like death will find him. Have you ever seen someone, Alhamdulillah, this spot, the angel of death cannot find me? Similarly, the rizq will find you. And the Rasulullah said, إِنَّ الرِّزْقَ لَيَطْلُبِ الْعَبْدِ كَمَا يَطْلُبُهُ أَجَلُهُ The rizq will look for me and you, just like death will look for us. Fourth. Now let's talk about the Razzaq himself. The word Ar-Razzaq is mentioned in the Quran only once in Surah Al-Dhariya. And with it, Allah said, Ar-Razzaq dhul quwwati al-mateen. Ya'ni, do not have any doubt in your mind. Who is the Razzaq? Listen to this, ya akhwan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Hadith Al-Qudsi. Listen to this. لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم اجتمعوا في صعيد واحد فسألوني فأعطيت كل إنسان منهم ما سأل لم ينقص ذلك من ملكي شيء الله أكبر الله سبحانه وتعالى said in the حديث القدسي if the first of you and the last of you, if all jinn kind and all mankind, yani all people from the day of Adam, all the way till the day of judgment, they all gathered in one place and they all raised their hands. Ya Allah, I want 
a million dollars. Ya Allah, I want a child. Ya Allah, I want a house. Ya Allah, I want a job. Ya Allah, I want a spouse. Everybody asked for anything they want. Zillions and billions and countless amount of people. Allah is saying if they all gathered and they all asked and I gave every single one of them what they asked for, that will not decrease my bounty. Just like if you put a needle in the ocean, how much water decreased from that ocean? And we have some of us that are so worried. And they have doubt. Sometimes we have more trust in a human being than the Razzaq himself. We put so much trust or so much fear from my boss. When he threatens me, if you keep going to Jumu'ah, you might get fired. If this ever happened to you, smile and tell the guy, is your name Razak? Who are you? You think you're going to stop my rizq? Or do you think that by you obeying a human being, Allah will give you more rizq? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ On purpose, there's a mad. Your rizq is up there. Your rizq is up there. What does that mean? No one down here can touch it. No one can threaten you. I can decrease or increase your rizq. No one. It isn't the sama, it's with me. وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَدُونَ So the Razak, he told us that whatever, whatever you want, I have its source. Not just a little bit of it. Its source. So how can I worry? And he promised to even provide for the ant in the middle of the night, under the rock, in the darkest forest. قُلُوا قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده Fifth, which is, I left it to the end, so most of you can hear it. Listen to this hadith with your heart. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن جبريل نفث في روعي إنه لا تموت نفس حتى تستكمل رزقها وإن أبطأ عليها فاتقوا الله وأجملوا في الطلب ولا يحملنكم استبطاء الرزق أن تأخذوه بمعصية الله فإن فإن الله لا ينال ما عنده إلا بطاعته والله this hadith should be engraved in our mind Jibreel has inspired me and told me a soul will not die until it finishes its term and acquires its rizq. So, be graceful in seeking provision. Fear Allah in seeking provision. And listen to this very carefully. And let not one of you Allow the delay of a provision to seek it through haram means. Because whatever is with Allah can only be sought by obeying Him. Do not let the delay of provision make you seek it through haram means. Let me open a smoke shop. Everybody is doing quick money. Let me sell alcohol. Everybody wants alcohol. Lottery is a good business. Yalla, 
I've been waiting for so long now, four or five months, and everybody's opening these shops and they're making good money. Why not me? Ya akhi, fear Allah. Wallahi, I love you for the sake of Allah. And Allah, this, <laughs> this is one of the rizq is that Allah brought you here today, or you're watching it, to hear and to know that this rizq that you're getting is haram. This rizq that you're getting is haram. And that risk was coming to you anyway. You just decided to get it through haram means. Whatever is with Allah can only be received through his obedience. And we all know that all this risk is from Allah Azza wa Jal. My brothers and sisters, Allahi this dunya, is not worth anything. Rasulullah one time he was walking with the Sahaba and he saw a dead lamb with short ears. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, who would buy this lamb for a dirham? Who would buy this lamb, dead lamb, for a dirham? He said, Ya Rasulullah, none of us. He said, who will take it for free? He said, Ya Rasulullah, even if it was alive, we do not want it because short ears is considered a defect. We don't want it, even if it was alive. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, by Allah. Listen, my brother and my sister who's seeking their wealth through haram. Listen, my brother and sister who have not spoken to his mother or to his father for years. Listen, my brothers and sisters who cut your ties of kinship because of a certain trivial matter. By Allah, this whole dunya is more insignificant in the eyes of Allah than this lamb in your eyes. This whole dunya is more insignificant in the sight of Allah than this lamb in your eyes. My brothers and sisters, with whatever is left from our time above this earth, let's try to increase the everlasting risk, the risk that will stay and be recorded in my book. And I will go there and I find it abundant. All this risk here, have you ever put some money or some jewelry or some cars or some uh, stock in a grave? Wallahi, the shroud has no pockets. They all came just like, they all leave just like they came. And they take with them only the a'mal they did above the ground. Let's do business with Allah Azza wa Jal. And look how, how generous is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Look how kareem is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You pray five times, will be recorded 50. You will do one hasana, multiplied by 10. You will fast one day, fi sabilillah, 70 years your face away from the hellfire. You guide someone to khair, you will get the same exact reward. This is, this is how the kareem, this is how, how kareem is the kareem. So let's invest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increase from the everlasting rizq. When some of us have any problem with any kind of the rizq that we mentioned, not only money, even though this ayah speaks about wealth. You have any problem, you have a problem at home, you have a problem with your children, your financial problem, health problem. Ya Allah, what should I do? Can you imagine? There's prescription for that from the Creator Himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ And whosoever his rizq, all oh, this rizq we spoke about, qudr, yani it's less or it's constricted. Yeah, it's me, ya Allah. What should I do? وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا آتَاهُ اللَّهُ 
Let him spend from what Allah has given him. How much should I spend, Ya Allah? لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما آتاها whatever you can afford. طيب يا الله I'm having so such a hard time at home. I'm having such a hard time finding a job, finding a spouse. If I spend and I give and I help the poor, because you ask me to, what is the reward? Listen, سيجعل الله بعد عسر يسرا. I, Allah, guarantee you that after this hardship, I'm going to give you ease. Allah is saying, you're going step by step. I'm having problem with my rizq. Spend as much as you can, and I'm going to change your situation to the best. So anytime you're going through any kind of hardship, sadaqah, sadaqah. Give sadaqah on behalf of that sick mother, that sick child, that misguided child. Those problems at home, Ya Allah, this sadaqah, you can give me peace at home, Ya Allah. On that behalf. That's specific sadaqah for a specific cause. I know you give sadaqah already, but no. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Actions are by intentions. And finally, the story that I love to mention all the time. When a Bedouin was told, did you hear the loaf of bread is $10? The loaf of bread is $10? He said, Wallahi, I do not care even if the grain of wheat became $10. They said, how come? He said, because Allah ordered me to worship him and promised to provide for me. I am doing my job and he is keeping his promise. I am doing my job and he is keeping his promise. My brothers and sisters, one of the greatest dua that you could ask for rizq, that you all know, Rabbi, inni. لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ Any kind of shortage in your life, make this dua with a sincere heart and with yaqeen. And Allah Azza wa Jal, بِإِذْنِ الله, will bless you with rizq from sources you've never expected. Don't, and I'll end with this, don't ever worry about the how. Only worry about the dua, the request. The how is not your problem. 